Hello! What I normally say at this stage is thanks very much for joining me again um, and to those of you that have seen other videos, welcome back. However, this video is really aimed to try and help people that are thinking about starting to turn and maybe they haven't got their own lathe yet, maybe they're just looking at them or they've been given one or maybe inherited one uh, and the purpose of doing this is because um, a few times, not, not lots of times, but a few people get in touch with me throughout the year saying, oh, what's this, what's that, what's the other? Um, and as a wood turner that's been turning for probably over 20 years, um, like um, many other people I chat to, we tend to talk about things on the assumption that everyone knows what we're talking about and quite often that isn't the case. As a prime example, if I said three letters TBC to most normal people that means to be confirmed. However, to wood turners what it means is turn between centres. So this is going to be a rough introduction to the lathe, um, looking at what you might want to make and looking at what tools and equipment you might need to look at uh, in order to make them. Before I go any further, um, I want to make one thing perfectly clear. You will have seen at the start of this video there are no adverts. We don't monetize this channel, it's to show off um, our kits, explain uh, how they work, how to make them and give people a chance to see what they're like working um, because we don't have a physical shop, we only sell online, um, so it's a chance to show you things moving or whatever. Also, we don't sell tools, or we don't sell lathes. So whilst I might have a jet here, I'm not saying buy a jet, you might want to buy a record or a oh, humpteen um, different makes that, that you might want to buy. I'm not, guide you, I'm not trying to guide you into a specific brand, what I'm trying to do is just point you in the direction of the specific peripherals that you might need um, to go on the lathe to make the things that you want to make. And I hope that you have an idea uh, if you're looking at this of the things you want to make. Maybe you've seen, I don't know, a pen um, as an example and thought, oh, I'd, like, I'd really like to have a go at that. Or maybe someone's given you a kit and you think, I need to have a go at that. What on earth am I going to need to turn that? Well, hopefully, very briefly and broadly, I'll tell you what you need. So I'm going to clear all the gubbins out of the way and we'll have a look to start with at the lathe. So here is um, one of two lathes that I've got. This is a small lathe uh, and to be honest I only generally use this for polish and over the other side of the workshop I've got a big one. But let's just take you through the bits of the lathe. This end here which is the motor, um, the motor's under there and it drives this end here with a belt. Um, this is called, this section here is called the headstock. Um, and on this particular model um, we can alter um, using the belt the different speeds along here. There are other models that are available that have variable speed so that's a that little dial that will change your speed up and down. Sometimes they have belts as well as that, that variable speed. Um, to be honest whilst I don't really want to give advice I can't help telling you um, my experience and my experience is these ones with the belts and nowhere near as user friendly as one with um, a little dial to turn the speed up and down. Um, but the variable speed ones are a bit more expensive. So this is your headstock. You can call it the drive end if you want to, as long as you understand when someone else on, um, you know, a, God forbid, something like a forum will say, what type of headstock have you got? You'll know they're talking about this end. At the other end, um, is the tailstock, um, which is this bit here. Um, in the middle we have uh, this section here which is called a banjo, you won't get a tune out of it, and on the top of that is the tool rest. You can just call it the tool rest, and this is where your tool will rest on top of there when the wood is spinning um, to stop your chisel bouncing down. It stops there and it scrapes the wood away as you're turning. That's not rocket science, I'm sure you've probably all seen it before. Now, with a lathe, generally what comes with it will be a drive centre. Um, in, in this instance, it was a four prong drive. There are a whole variety of these, all different sizes, star shaped ones, ones with um, the points that go in and out. But basically, that slots in there and it will stick in the end of a piece of wood 
like so, and it will cause the wood to spin. At the other end, what is generally used and supplied with a lathe is this, and this is called uh, a live centre. Uh, and it's called a live centre because it, if you can see that, good job, it's got a bit of muck on it, you can see it turning, is because it turns. So what that allows the lathe to do is this is causing the drive, we'll pull that up there and press that onto the end, that's spinning freely, that's causing the drive, there's our tool rest and we're now ready to turn the bits away. Okay. The important thing when you're looking at buying a lathe or you've got a lathe is identifying some of the sizes. So this part here uh, has something called a Morse taper fitting. For this lathe it's a, a number two. So when you see MT2 or MT1 or MT3, that's a letter M and then T, it stands for Morse taper and it's the size of the taper on here that fits into this part of the headstock here. The other important thing to know about your lathe is what size the thread is on here. There are generally three sizes but you need to look up your model and manufacturer to find out what that is. So this particular one is an MT2 and that fits in there and it fits in nice and snugly and that will rotate and drive uh, the motor will drive that round to drive the wood so we can turn it. These bits are all sat on what's called the lathe bed. This, this part here is what's called the lathe bed. Now this lathe is really quite small, uh, it doesn't have a lot of travel up and down. Um, it has got some holes on the end here. I can, if I wanted to, have an, extend, have an extension, um, a lathe bed extension bolted onto that. To be honest, um, again, this is just my opinion, there will be people that don't agree that um, it's better to have a single piece than it is to have two pieces bolted together. Um, if I want to turn a pen, I've got no problem with the size of that on this lathe. Uh, dead easy. Um, I can, I'll show you a mandrel in a bit, but um, I can fit that on there, no problem at all. Um, when it comes to something a bit bigger, if I'm looking at something a little bigger, like a pepper mill, then I'm really starting to struggle a little bit and I, there's absolutely no way on earth that I could make this um, pepper mill. Oops. Um, it hasn't got a mechanism in this, this is just a, a blank one that I've been playing with. But there's absolutely, even without the top, there's no way that I could make something this size on a lathe this big. Um, so this is why it's important to think about what you want to make before deciding on what size lathe you're going to get um, and basically if you have a big one you can turn little things on it if you have a little one you can't turn big things on it so that's a that's a hopefully a, a good pointer so the next question is what do you want to make do you want to make pens do you want to make pepper mills do you not want to use a kit at all do you want to just um, turn um, a, a bowl, something like that, that is just wood. I don't do many bowls, which is why this is pretty much the only one I, I have. I've got a couple of others in the house which um, have got fruit in. Um, you know, or you're going to stick to small projects like bottle openers. Um, there's a whole range of things that, that you can do. But when you start off with the lathe in its basic form, as it comes from, as an example, the shop, what you will get is a drive centre, a live centre and probably a face plate that will enable you to screw a big blank on to turn a bowl. The size of bowl you can turn is determined by the distance here and because this is small you can see that you can, I can turn a small bowl on there without any problem at all. Bigger ones are going to be a bit more difficult. There are lathes that have a headstock, the motor end, that actually rotates so you can have um, a larger bowl, not over the lathe, but, but sticking forwards of the lathe here. So if big bowls are your thing, then that's what you'll need, one of the headstocks that turn around. I can't say I would advise that for a beginner, um, but there you go, that's, that's more, uh, more advanced. So we need to have a look at what, what we want to make. Um, and the first thing I'm going to look at, the first section I'm going to look at, is because it is by far 
the most popular thing to do in the UK is making pens. Um, so let's have a look at the equipment that we're going to need to make a pen. Pens. A very emotive subject for me because generally I don't agree with lots of other people out there. There's, you will see lots and lots of videos with people saying if you're a beginner start turning with a slimline pen. Um, this is now the only slimline pen that we do, it's called the Chaucer, it's rather a fancy one, it's not the cheapest one. Uh, I wouldn't start with a slimline pen for a variety of reasons. Um, firstly you have to have a mandrel which is one of these things and I'll explain a little bit more about these uh, as, as we go uh, into it. You, you, you will need one of those in order to turn a slimline pen. If you look on the internet you will see slimline pens are available from lots of people. They're all called a slimline pen, they're all very different qualities. Unfortunately I don't have one but one of my customers uh, bought from a, a well-known supplier up north uh, one that had um, in the mechanism, and the mechanism's this bit here, um, the inside of that was plastic and when it was made the two parts um, would just, they just flopped around. It was absolutely terrible uh, and, and in my opinion if you bought a lathe and spent 40 quid on a mandrel and you spent two pounds on a, on a pen kit and you've made something and it wobbles around you won't be very happy with it. I wouldn't be very happy with it and it doesn't encourage you to, to go back uh, and, and turn. Um, so I would look at something other than a slimline pen kit, whether it's ours or someone else's, is, is, is irrelevant. Personally, I would start with something that has one single barrel, like if I can find it here, there we go. Um, this, is, this is a new one that um, we've just done. It's got one barrel in here uh, it's larger than a slim line um, and it means what it can be, as I mentioned before, TBC. And you'll remember, of course, that TBC means turn between centres. Um, and I'll show you why. If we take a tube from a, from a kit, we can pop in what's called bushings. Now this is a bushing here, so these ones are brass ones um, that cut off and they're steel as well and they fit into either end of that tube. Now to make a pen you will have drilled a hole in a lump of wood uh, and you will have stuck this brass tube into your lump of wood. I'm sure you've seen that already but these are bushings, they go on the side and that can be mounted uh, and, uh, and I mount these between centres. I have a different drive at this end and you then don't need to use a mandrel but not all kits are like that. If you want to use a mandrel with, it, with this particular kit you can do. There's one of our new kits that we don't let you use a mandrel because I hate them that much. Um, so you could look at doing a single barrel kit as I say whether it's ours or someone else's doesn't matter between centres. In order to do that you will need a live tail stock at this end and you will need what's called a dead center at this end. That is a dead center because there's no moving parts on that. Engineers traditionally used that um, in olden times at, at the tailstock end and they'd lubricate it to hold the thing center. I use one of these as a drive um, and I pop it in there. I could put my blank in there like so, bring up my tailstock having locked it off and create some pressure to hold that and turn it like so and just tighten up a little bit more there we go and lock that off so that is turning what's called between centers there uh, and my advice to someone looking to start turning pens would be to start with this the pen kits are a bit more expensive but you don't have to spend 40 quid on one of these. Having discussed that, now let's have a look at mandrels because some kits do need mandrels. There are commonly two types of mandrels. This is a basic mandrel um, with a, a collet and a morse taper up this end. The main um, bar down the centre 
under a locking nut. So by loosening this, what you need tools, I can't do it, this rod slides, slides up and down and you'll then slot on all the parts for your pen that you want to make. Tighten that up to cause the compression to hold the parts um, in together and then you're ready to turn. So that would fit in like what I forgot to tell you is this is how you get the bits out of the end of a, a lathe. There we go, we'll knock that bit out and we'll put that bit in there. So here's the basic mandrel on here and you can bring up the tail stock because there's a little dip in the end of there that you can just secure that in there and you can then turn your pen on this part here. Um, certainly for smaller pens as I said like slimline pens if you really want to do them you'll have to do them that way. For pens that have generally two parts because there are other fountain pens that have two parts um, you would normally use a mandrel so you can see the two parts together on the mandrel and you can get an idea of the shape that your final pen is going to make on there. The other type of mandrel that we can look at, if we can just move that out of the way, is what's called a compression mandrel and that's this one here. Um, so we've got um, our MT2 that goes in there like so and we've got a different end that goes in this end which is this one here. This also rotates, this is live, and it's a little bit easier to use. Personally, I don't like them. Forgive me if I'm in front of the camera. So you would now pop on your um, tubes and bushings. These are some bushings that are on here already. Um, I don't know whether I can zoom in anymore so you can see a, a little better. Right, there we go. Let's try that. So um, you've got your bushings and you would have your pen tube on there. You would bring that up, lock off your tailstock and then wind that in to cause the compression um, on your tube between the bushings and the bushings uh, if I didn't explain before are basically guides to show you how to turn down what dimension to turn each part of the pen down to to get a good fit um, because with pens you really do need a very very good fit if I can hold that where is it going to focus is it going to focus on that Probably not. Uh, you need a good fit between the, the pen body itself and the metal parts um, there, which hopefully, I'm not sure, yeah, there we go. That's, so you can see the idea is that um, you get a very good fit. And it's quite a precise skill making a pen and getting it the right size. Um, sadly, all these mandrels, um, because it's metal on metal, it's nothing to do with the manufacturers, it's just the way it is. Because they have to slide up and down freely, there's always a bit of a gap and there's always a bit of movement. If you can hear that tap in there, that's the bushing rattling on the mandrel and that's why I'm personally not keen on them. Um, but they serve a purpose uh, and you will need those for multi-part pens and certainly slimline ones if you want to make one of those. So we've looked at how to mount pen parts on a lathe um, but we also need to consider what equipment you might need to actually drill the wood out. Now you may have um, a pillar drill, I would suggest probably a hand drill isn't ideal I have seen some people use them, um, I personally wouldn't. So you could use a pillar drill and I'll pop a picture of a pillar drill or, or bench drill um, up in a little corner of the video so you can see what it is um, if you don't know. Um, but there are other ways of doing it as well. One of the other ways of doing it is to use a chuck. I'm going to come on to chucks in a minute but this is a chuck here and this chuck has got pen jaws on it and it will fit. 
fit onto the headstock there and it will hold a square piece this one happens to be too big but let me get a smaller one so I can show you there we go so I can I can use that to drill um, using a drill and a Jacobs chuck this is a Jacobs chuck here which would slot up into the other end now if you remember me saying earlier that I could use um, a small lathe to make small projects you can see now one of the problems is when I put a chuck on here a Jacobs chuck on this end with a drill bit in I haven't got a lot of space left that's the only space I've got there so if I wanted to turn something like a pepper mill which needs drilling I've got absolutely no chance of doing that at all so that was slot in there a Jacobs chuck in the tailstock and you can then drill the parts of the pen blank out on the lathe uh, if you wanted to you would need to buy a chuck, you would need to buy a Jacobs chuck at this end and you obviously need the correct drill bits down here as well. So that pretty much covers the basic equipment that you might need for making pens. The, there are thousands and thousands of probably bits of equipment that you can use. There is a thing called a pen press. I never use a pen press because I don't think I need a pen press. What I use is something called a, an arbor, an ar or it's an arbor blank actually. I've put a bit of tape on just to protect the uh, parts of the pen when I press it together. But if I pop that in there and have one the other end, I can bring that up when the parts of the pen are in there and I can press them together on the lathe. So my lathe also works as a pen press as well. If you want to go out and spend 50 quid on a special little press just to push your pen bits together, then fine. Knock yourself out, as they say. So, that's a brief introduction to turning pens and the equipment that you might want to look at in order to complete them. So, what if you want to make a bowl? Well, quite often, as I said earlier, um, a lathe will come with something like this this is called a face plate and what you would do is get a big lump of wood um, right so you would get your face plate and you would get something like a bowl blank and you would screw that onto there from this side it'll leave some screw holes and you can then mount that on your lathe that will screw on there like so I haven't got enough hands for this um, there we go that will screw on there so your bowl blank is spinning on there this one's actually a bit big for for this lathe um, but at some point you're going to have to hold this bowl a different way what do you use for that well that's when we come back to a chuck this is a chuck it's called a four jaw chuck because surprisingly enough it's got four jaws they're all numbered around here and in its basic form um, just ignore those two because these are different jaws um, on the front um, they can have all manner of different jaws attached onto here and I'll get some jaws to show you the different ones that you can get so this is um, a quite a large but a fairly basic chuck this has got the pen jaws on that I mentioned earlier but I'm going to take those off um, and you'll see there's just some little nuts that unscrew in there to allow the removal of these particular jaws and you'll then be able to see what the, what the basic chuck looks like so there we go that is the basic chuck itself um, it adjusts with a, a key like so and if I pop that in there you'll see the jaws closing up like so and then if I turn it anti-clockwise um, opening up uh, and you've already seen the pen jaws on there there's a variety of other jaws that you can get um, and here's a few of them here um, this is how I keep mine um, so you'll see there's um, small dovetail jaws medium dovetail jaws there's expanding jaws uh, there's a wood screw these will that will screw into a large wood blank um, to start off um, a bowl uh, uh, for instance or another long project that you might be looking at doing so all these different jaws will fit onto that chuck 
when you get onto big bowls then you will need jaws like these these are so big um, and these are for really holding very big bowls um, these won't even fit on on this lathe so again that's another thing to consider there are smaller versions of these um, I'm not going to go into massive um, detail on those so but if you're looking at, at doing a bowl then really you need to be looking at buying a chuck to fit on the headstock of your lathe here and probably start off maybe with a, a set of dovetail jaws and um, they are quite expensive to buy um, but if bowls are your thing then that's probably the best thing to do most chucks when you buy them don't come bare they come with one set of jaws and quite often um, they're the dovetail jaws here you will see if I hold it up that, that there's a little bit of an angle so you can cut that angle into your blank um, put the blank over there and then use it to expand to hold um, your ball blank there's plenty of people on YouTube that show you how to, to how to turn bowls and really just trying to guide you through, as I've said before, the equipment that you might need. So, just to recap, we've looked at pin mandrels and we've looked at chucks or this headstock chuck. Um, I would advise anyone that's going to do any turning to get one of these. It's called a Jacob's chuck. Um, it looks just like a drill and that basically is what it is. You need to get the right Morse taper fit, fitting in here and it fits in, as I said earlier, at the tailstock of the lathe and that enables you to very gently and slowly drill into the ends of a project. So far what we've looked at is all the gadgets and gubbins that actually go onto the lathe. Um, now presuming you've now managed to get the right equipment to mount your piece of wood on the lathe, um, then we need to look at how we're going to turn it and that involves tools um, another massive subject in its basic in its most basic form which is all I'm going to look at today uh, you can get traditional wood turning tools such as these they're all called different things um, the curved ones generally are gouges either roofing spin there's all kinds of different ones uh, relating to the angles and whatever but the curved ones basically are gouges and there are scrapers and this is particular one is what's called a skew chisel um, so you can look at traditional ones you can get these in sets you might pick them up second hand um, you know and, and these are the tools that I use you have to be aware if you use this type of tool that they need sharpening um, and your turning will only ever be as good uh, as uh, your sharpened tools will allow you to be in order to sharpen these tools you will need I would suggest a bench grinder yes you can buy a fancy jig motor all in one thing to do it if you've got 300 quid three or four hundred quid to spend on sharpening your tools um, if you're starting out maybe you don't want to spend that so uh, a small bench grinder and I'll put a, a picture of one of those up um, in a minute will help you sharpen these however you don't have to use this type of tool because there are other tools like this one that have removable ends here and you'll see it takes an allen key in there this one's got a square end um, I rarely use this tool in fact I never use it because um, I don't like it but um, you can buy this type of tool uh, and get a variety of different fittings in the end you don't need to sharpen them uh, you can turn them round re-put them back down again so you know if the if the if the sharpness has gone from this bit you can use turn it around and use that bit there are curved ones and all manner of other things the disadvantage is you need to change the end um, if you've only got one tool with different ends you need to change the end all the time um, but you can get different ones of these as well there is no right or wrong uh, as with lots and lots of turning there's, there isn't a right, right way and a wrong way um, there's just your way and you really need to, to have a play with it and see what you're comfortable with this tool as an example I think cost about a hundred and something odd pounds uh, I never use it because I don't like it and I'd much rather use traditional ones that's just my opinion that's not right that's just what I prefer um, so tools are the next thing that you need to consider uh, putting in your arsenal in order to start turning um, and you certainly wouldn't want a tool this size if you're turning pens 
there are small sets of tools uh, for turning pens because pens themselves are very small. So just to show you, there's there's the, um, the one that I don't like. Um, there's a traditional um, tool which if I hold them a bit further away you'll get an idea uh, of the size of them. I haven't got enough hands but these are pen turning um, chisels and you'll see they're a lot smaller because they're for a smaller project but you wouldn't use these to turn a bowl unless it was a miniature bowl. Um, so um, these are the type of tools that you can look at, uh, at getting um, and to be honest for what they are they're fairly expensive but that's just life unfortunately. So lastly, but by no means leastly, in fact most importantly, to do anything on a lathe you must have some protective equipment, um, if it's, even if it's just something to protect your eyes like these. Um, if you're doing something like pens, um, I would just use these. If you're doing something larger, um, protect your whole face with something like a full face um, shield probably can't hear me now, um, for something like a full face shield uh, there are those that are frightened of absolutely everything that would go in a full responder suit, breathing apparatus and all the rest of it. Um, it's really up to you to choose the right equipment for, for what you're doing and your environment. Um, I certainly couldn't give you any advice um, but you do need something um, to make sure you're protected from the flying chips that, that come off. Um, so basically just to recap, you need to think about what you want to turn, what size lathe you're going to need, what other equipment you're going to need to put on that. And I hope this really, really brief video has maybe just um, given you something to go and look elsewhere to think, yeah, that's what I'd like to turn. So I'm, I want to look at having a, a lathe, some basic tools and a chuck because I think bowls are the thing that I want to do. Um, that's the purpose of this video. I have to say it's not a get out clause. Wood turning is a massive, massive subject. I couldn't possibly cover all of it, nor am I experienced enough to cover all of it, but I just wanted to do um, a, a brief introduction just to point people in the right direction and explain what a headstock and a tailstock and a pen bushing actually is um, to help people that have never, ever done this before. Um, I hope um, to any um, new people out there I haven't frightened you. Let me tell you, this is a fantastic hobby. Um, the, everyone um, that I've met that has anything to do with the wood turning, lovely people. They're, they're all, we're all part of a big club, um, if you like. Everyone's more than happy to, to help anyone else. I'm doing this video. I've nothing to gain from doing this video because I'm not selling anything. As I said, we don't sell tools, we don't sell lathes. Um, and we don't advertise on the channel. I, I just I want to encourage um, maybe someone that thinks I might be interested to actually take the plunge and have a go. It's a huge amount of fun. It is by far the most easiest and fun way to turn a block of scrap into something hopefully quite nice and quite useful. Um, be it a bottle opener or um, a pepper mill or a bowl as I've said before there's so many things that you can do um, with it um, but if you just go and buy the lathe as it stands and comes off the shelf probably all you'll turn is a spindle so if you want to make a staircase just leave it as it is you won't need anything else um, I hope that's been helpful um, if you have any questions drop us an email if I have time I'm always happy to help um, if I can do um, and hopefully we'll see you back at one of our other videos to show you one or two of the kits and how they go together um, but for the time being thanks very much for watching uh, we'll see you soon bye bye for now